Today, I'm gonna answer the age old question once and for all, leak code or projects? My name is Amon. In college, I landed six high paying software engineered internships at companies like Amazon, Shopify, and HP. And once I graduated college, I was able to turn those internships into multiple six figure job offers by age 22. And in this video, I'm gonna break down what kind of person should do leak code, what kind of person should do projects, and give you that final answer. Do you need to focus on leak code or projects, a combination of both, and in what order? But before I give you that answer and break down the exact step by step solution of what you have to focus on, we need to understand why do people even ask this question in the first place? See, the fundamental problem is information overwhelm. See, if you're watching this video, you've probably watched dozens of other videos like this from all over the internet, from tons of different people giving you all this different advice. And because of that, you just simply don't know what to do. You don't have a simple order, strategy, framework, nothing. And that's the main issue because when people get too much information, they're hearing do projects from one person, they're hearing only study lead code from another person. You don't know who to trust. So before we get into an actual answer, I wanna tell you that you could just pick one and then do the other one and you'd be completely fine. Regardless of who you are, if you did lead code and then you did projects, or if you did projects and then you did lead code, as long as you actually committed to doing and learning both, you would be completely fine. But I know that's not what you wanna hear. You don't wanna hear me say that. You wanna hear me tell you which one to go with, lead code or project. And the inevitable answer is, it depends. It depends on what your unique weaknesses are. Let's start with lead code. Now, if you're unfamiliar with lead code, lead code is a website that hosts tons of data structures and algorithms problems that helps you prepare for coding for technical interviews for software engineering jobs and internships. I see lead code like going to the gym for CS majors. Sure, when you're an actual software engineer, you're not gonna be doing lead code on the job, but it helps train that part of thinking so you actually get the job. Just like a basketball player doesn't bench press during a basketball game, but they do that on their off days because it helps build their overall athleticism and strength, just like lead code does for CS majors. Now, the way you're gonna know if you need to do lead code is based on your actual outcomes in the game. Because fundamentally, we can make up all this theory you want, but you need to ask yourself, what have you actually experienced? Have you had multiple OAs and maybe even a few interviews that you simply crashed and burned because your lack of data structures knowledge? If that's been the case, if you failed even one or two OAs, chances are you need to work on your lead code skills. Or in another direction, if you've solved less than 50 lead code mediums, well, you need to work on lead code. You have to get it done. But on the flip side, what about projects? A lot of people ask me, hey, I know I need to learn lead code, but I wanna know whether I need to do projects before I work on them. Now, if we set lead code aside, who needs to work on projects? First of all, if someone is able to pass OAs and interviews because their data structures and algorithms knowledge is great, but they're struggling with getting interviews, then projects would be helpful. Because fundamentally, projects only matter because they get you that first interview. Lead codes help to pass the interviews, projects help you get the interview. Now, the reason projects help you get the interview is because a recruiter will look at your resume, notice that you have a lot of interesting projects and experiences with tons of different languages and frameworks, and that will improve the likelihood that they get you that interview. So first level, if you get interviews, but you can't pass them, focus on lead code, if you never get interviews in the first place, but you might be able to pass them, you probably wanna work on projects. But it's not that simple because frankly, there's a lot of people watching this video who don't get interviews, nor can they pass them. If person A, their name is Mark, and Mark is able to get tons of interviews, but they can't pass them, or person B is Jeff, Jeff just never gets any interviews, even though their programming skills are in tip top shape. In the middle, we have Kevin, and Kevin can't get interviews, nor can Kevin pass them. And I'm sorry to say, that's over 50% of the people I work with. So what should Kevin do? Is Kevin just screwed and just gonna lay down and give up forever? No, what Kevin needs to do is work on both concurrently at the same time in the right order. Here's what I'd recommend you do if you can't get interviews, nor can you pass them if you're a sad little Kevin. The first thing you need to do is don't worry about projects. You heard me say it, don't worry about projects. Projects are useful to get interviews, but there's an even better thing you can do to get even more interviews, and that's getting actual experience. And a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of people think that, oh, the only way they can build a resume is to work on some random projects on the side, but what they don't realize is that what's even more relevant and recruiters like to see is a real world experience at an actual institution. And this doesn't have to be a software engineer internship if you're not at that point. This can be clubs, hackathons, research even. Clubs and hackathons are probably the best way to do it. If I were you, I would literally look at your university's website, find several software engineering clubs, app development clubs, and immediately enroll in those right now and put those right on your resume. And there 
here you go. You have your work experience section filled out and you didn't even have to do a single project. And one work experience is more powerful than three to four projects because it shows that you're actually able to show up and do something with an external institution or external employer. Now, the only reason you would start with projects is if you need something to put in your resume to actually get into a club or a hackathon, which is reasonable. A lot of clubs and hackathons actually ask you to submit some information or submit your resume before they accept you. And in that case, sure, I would work on some base level projects, but as soon as you start to get work experience, you don't need any more projects. Forget about working on projects. Only focus on work experience when you have that experience. So the first step if you're an inexperienced Kevin is to do some one or two random projects, use those projects to get into a hackathon or a club, and then forget about projects forever. Now, once you get admittance into a club or a hackathon, then I would go all into leak code because once you have some experience in your resume, you will double or even triple the number of interviews you get and in the meantime, you need to make sure your lead code skills are in tip top shape. So in the end, that's the answer. Now, if you want my help with actually getting good at lead code, building projects and getting experience, I run a school for aspiring software engineers and aspiring software engineer interns called the Software Engineering Accelerator. It's done with you. We just get the job done, absolutely guaranteed. So if you're interested in learning more about that, click the top link in the description. And if you want to know how to actually get good at lead code, watch this video over here. And if you're still struggling with your resume, watch this video over here. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.